Well, when they abolished the Planning Commission, they should have got rid of the centrally sponsored schemes along with it, maybe. No, but I just wanted to pick up on, on a couple of things that came from that. In fact, when KTI was talking about the, the how much money Telangana gets back on the taxes it pays, historically, the South has been subsidizing the North. There's very little doubt about that. Uh, and uh, other states, I remember uh, Mr. Siddhar Siddharamaya, when the terms of reference of the 15th Commission, Finance Commission came out, he pointed out that for every one rupee of tax contributed by Uttar Pradesh, the state receives 179 back, whereas Karnataka, rather like Telangana today, received 0 0.47. Uh, and he says, how long can you keep incentivizing population growth? Now, this ties into the question of central assistance because it's again striking, and this is not from him, I, I was doing my own research, Karnataka meets 72% of its expenses from its own state taxes, whereas Bihar meets just 23%. The remaining 77 comes from central allocations. So, unlike most other federal systems, India's revenues go dispro disproportionately to our worst performing states. And those are usually states with poor levels of education, high rates of fertility and population growth. Uh, and, and the south where these things are done better and there are high performance states by any yardstick, thereby get short shrift, which is actually going to the heart of the issues of federalism. Because if indeed, as a result of the federal system, you're subsidizing the poorer performing states, in principle, no argument. But if the way in which it's done seems to reward lack of performance, population growth resulting from, from that particular um, misgovernance in some of these states, and those who are performing well get penalized. In other words, if Kerala runs much better health outcomes and much better educational outcomes, its reward should not be to get less money from the Center for Health and for Education. But that's de facto what's happening. Yes. And this remains a serious problem, it seems to me, and goes to the heart of the whole question as to why many of the southern states are talking to you. I do want to join the others in congratulating the organizers for getting these fine minds from the south together. I think I'm the only one from a non-regional party uh, on, this, on this panel. But the idea is precisely that it's high time we woke up to the fact that the South has real, has real concerns. I, I just have one uh, provocative thought for the finance ministers and I think for all of us. You know, when we say federal, are we fully federal? Are we truly federal? You know, if you look at the United States, they are also a federal republic. In the United States, you know, this whole question about devolution, you know, collecting taxes and then devolving. As opposed to that, why can't we think and why can't we propose a system where even the income tax, even the corporate tax, is actually collected and, you know, deducted at the source. Why should we pay to the center and then go to Delhi and line up each of our finance ministers and, you know, uh, I wouldn't call it a bowl of sorts, but, you know, kind of make a request, plead with them, and then eventually get our money back a few months later. Why can't we actually be a truly, fully federal republic and actually start collecting taxes at the source, including income tax and corporate tax? But to add to that, from, from a northern perspective, how do you then deal with uh, the fact that growth paths have taken our country? When I, I said that, I mean our share of the income tax no, and no, corporate I, tax. I, I don't mean the whole thing. So, I, but I'm just going to throw out uh, one element to this, which is the challenge of inequality. You have such huge convergence, uh, so, sorry, such huge divergence, which uh, all economic theory would have argued over time would have led closer towards convergence, but there's no sign of that convergence, and we still sit within uh, the union. So uh, there has to be equitable sharing. It is a very integrated economy, as we discovered in the times of COVID. Uh, the fact that labor and capital moves, it moves from the north to the south, so there is an interdependency. In some senses, it sharpens the federal, uh, it, it's, it's a sign of a sharpened federal tension but also a sign of deepened federalism. So how do we balance these two tensions as we go forward in a fairly fraught environment? Okay, I, let me take the simple question first. Right? I mean, I think certainly we have many examples of societies where income taxes or direct taxes happen at multiple levels. So, you know, uh, both KTR and I lived in the U.S. for many years. The federal government takes some tax, the state government takes some tax, the city of New York takes some tax. The city of Los Angeles takes some tax, right? These are all uh, in, independent of each other. So certainly at some point we have to say that the power of direct taxation has to be given to the states, whatever the constitutional need for that is. But there's a broader problem here, I think. In no federal society are all people the same, 
right? Like uh, economically, you will always find better offs and less well offs. The unique problem of India and why I said to the 15th Finance Commission in my submission, written submission, I said, if equality and efficiency were the targets of finance commissions, then you all have been miserable failures for 25 years. Because every other society in the world, every other country in the world, the US, China, European Union, wherever, you take funds from the better off, you give it to the less well off, and whatever the measure is, it converges. You know, um, longevity, uh, health measures, per capita income, education access. It converges. That's what the transfers are supposed to do. In our case, not only it doesn't converge, not only it doesn't stay the same, not only it's diverging, it's accelerating in its divergence. So the ratio keeps changing again and again and still the, the outcome gets worse and worse. Let's just take Tamil Nadu's case. At one point, we were roughly 7-7.5% seven, seven of the population, 7-7.5% seven, seven of the GDP, got about 7% of the tax devolution of that 32% that they devolved. Now we are less than 6%, I think, of the population, about 10, 10.5% of the GDP, and we get about 4% of the taxes. That means for 25 years, these things have been going the wrong way, and we are not getting convergence. So there's something structurally wrong. And what's structurally wrong is not with us. What's structurally wrong is in those northern states where despite getting massive devolution, despite getting massive transfers, they are not able to improve the quality of people's lives, the average education access or the, you know, social development indicators or human development indicators. So, if your measures on which you allocate, you know, you know the formula for the uh, Finance Commission, some population, some gap to actual, you know, all these forest cover, land and all that. Clearly, they are allocating the money on the wrong dimensions because they keep on allocating more money and things keep getting worse. So there's something profoundly wrong in the developmental model of the northern states, particularly the Hindi belt. That unless that is fixed, no matter how much money you transfer, you're not going to be able to fix the problem. You can do politics with it, but you can't improve people's lives unless you find out what that is. And one, I have written in my submission, one main thing they can fix is empower women, ensure girls stay in school, delay marriages, get them you know, better health outcomes, and they haven't done that. That's really, even a state like Gujarat, that has slightly higher per capita income than Tamil Nadu, 50% or so of the girls around 18 are not in school. That's not true in any southern state. Right? So, there's something structurally wrong that money can't fix, that needs to be fixed some other way. Otherwise, uh, we're just keeping on going the wrong way. No other country, no other union in the world has this bad an outcome. I, I completely agree with him on how miserably they have failed in the north. But they come here and lecture us, by the way. You have to admire their temerity. You have to really admire their guts and temerity to come to the south, lecture all of us on how to run our states and how to actually administer, and how miserably we have done vis-a-vis -vis them. The, when the fact is, all the indicators, no matter what you take, all the human development indices, all the social indicators will show you otherwise. There is, uh, you, I think what both of you are saying gets to the heart of the governance issue. Um, and there is a lot to be learned. That's why federalism matters so much from what different states are doing. So the country learned from the midday meals. The country also learned from Bihar's attempt at giving bicycles to girls to try and bring them, uh, get, get them to secondary schools. And in all of this, I think one aspect that we haven't talked about much is, and you brought it up in your initial remarks, the, the question of deliberation, that at the heart of federalism is the idea of coming together to dialogue, to deliberate, to share, to learn, and evolve solutions to these very wicked, hard problems. There has been, Ms. Reddy, if you can reflect a little bit on this, constant attempts in our history of trying to create these so-called sites of deliberation. The Interstate Council, which is now a punishment posting for the bureaucrat, uh, the planning commission, everybody said, had all, was filled with all kinds of problems. The National Development Council did not work, so we created the Niti Aayog. But then we left it to the finance departments, or the Ministry of Finance, rather, to do deliberation with states. Uh, the GST Council, which was meant to be a site of deliberation, it works sometimes, it doesn't on other occasions. How do we think about this institutional question? Are, there, is, are we missing something? And what kind of space do we need for states 
to come together, the regional coming together, of course, is full of learning, the southern states coming together, the northeastern states coming together, but there's a lot needed for this deliberative environment to come together. Um, is it an institutional problem as well as, as much as it is a political problem? I think it is both, uh, Yamini. Off late, I think uh, last year and this year, together we had two uh, South Zonal Council meetings. I think they were quite uh, uh, well held and uh, we could see sizable outcome. Of course, I believe for a very long time, Zonal Council meetings were not held. But again, coming to the fundamental uh, question is, are we a union or a federation? Oh. Now, I know it's very difficult not to be uh, speaking for autonomy, not to be speaking uh, uh, in favour of uh, regionalism or sub-regionalism. Because once you speak about unitary, then it becomes dry. But at the same time, India, is it a federation or is it a union? Even though we have certain elements or uh, quite important, quite a lot of importance given to the federal structure, we are basically a unitary country. That is the reason that more of power we have to uh, reconcile and accept. Probably the reasons at that point of time would have been different from many other countries. Now you look at Russia, you look at what's happening in the UK, you look at Spain. See, everywhere you have this sub-regionalism to such an extent that there is a constant uh, 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 friction between the union and the uh, states or the uh, uh, independent units. So for India to be one, there are various issues where we have to be large-hearted and given. Now, for example, I'll take the case of northeastern states. They, they barely have anything for them. It is the duty of us to support them. So we have to, at some point of time, feel that probably we are more fortunate. And because of us being more fortunate, it becomes incumbent upon us to support all the states that do not have certain or have natural disadvantages. So it becomes difficult when we actually compare ourselves to the West and especially to the United States of America. See, there it is a federation. It's a clear federation. Like uh, uh, Mr. Sheshi said in the beginning and Mr. KTR said in the beginning, it is basically a federation of states that were already there. Whereas we in India, at that point of time when we got independence, the complications were so huge, they were princely states, they were areas that were ruled by the British government, by the crown, and uh, so many diversity in caste, creed, language, there are so many difficulties where unless there is some sort of a strong centre and strong integration, it becomes difficult to hold on, I feel personally. Now, it becomes very nice to say that I am Andhraite, but at the same time, unless we say I am Indian first, and then on the right, it is difficult for this country to survive. No, I, 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 I want to make a slight distinction here. It's precisely because I'm Indian that I worry that all the money is being thrown into a well and no development happens in UP. Right? It's, not, it's not the money that I begrudge. It's that hundreds of millions of fellow citizens are not getting development, are not getting growth, are not getting access. So, it... it, it it is because of patriotism. I'm not saying I don't want to give the money. I'm saying we are, just like KTR said, we are happy to contribute. We are well off. We are lucky. We have been well governed. We are educated. We want to help. But we should get something that helps our fellow citizens. If we keep on transferring the wealth and it keeps on going into, you know, nothingness, into smoke, that's what we are concerned about. It's, it's, it, it, how do I say this? If it was just a zero-sum game that says who gets more, who gets less, etc., then it's a pointless debate. Why do we come to public life? We're not, you know, just trying to, it's not like going to a casino and, you know, rolling the dice, right? There should be some uh, future vision of a better tomorrow than today. And that better tomorrow, it is hard to imagine a country where hundreds of millions of people get left behind and yet there is a better tomorrow. They also must participate in this. And that, that's a state problem, but the union trying to dictate a one-size-fits-all as the disparity increases is an exercise in futility at best. Or some kind of, you know, uh, I don't know, um, megalomania at worst. If I yeah. can just add a little bit to this. 
42 percent was the devolution, vertical devolution by the 14th Finance Commission and 15th Finance Commission actually made it 41. One person going to the Union territory of Kashmir. At that point of time, there was a lot of uh, comment on why do we have to give that? But is it right? If we are not coming forward to give that one percent to a area, territory called Kashmir, on one point of view, you look at it from the state point of view, it might sound to be state uh, advantages to the state. But when you look at it from the country's point of view, is it correct? That's my question. You, Emily, go ahead. I just had one, one, quick, uh, <clears throat> one quick point. You know, I've been a minister for eight years. I've been a minister in the state for eight years and uh, Honorable Prime Minister and his team have been in Delhi for the last eight years. You talked about divergent India. You talked about how India is so different, how heterogeneous it is, how everything is different in northeast, west, east, south, etc. How many times has this government in Delhi made an effort to actually make us sit together because Prime Minister keeps talking about Team India. How many times has actually Team India sat together and tried to learn from each other? If Tamil Nadu is doing something very good in health, should I not learn from it? Should I reinvent the wheel? I don't think there has been a single situation where this government in India tried to actually say, listen, there are some good things that have been done in some pockets of the country. Why don't you learn from each other why, without reinventing the wheel? That has not happened. Second point, they talk about cooperative federalism. I mean, lip service is fine. I mean, it's all nice to hear all these nice, uh, uh, you know, uh, fancy words. But the fact is, is there cooperative federalism in the way they behave, in the way they actually operate? No, it is coercive federalism. That's what they, that's what they actually, uh, uh, you know, in terms of actions, that's what they actually deliver. Sabka saad, sabka vikas. Seriously? Has it been happening? Has it really happened? I don't think so. In fact, last point I would say, somebody was joking when I was walking in, I was preparing because, you know, there are some very, very sharp minds here. So I figured, you know, I should prepare. And somebody told me, this Prime Minister, for him, GDP is not gross domestic product, but for him, it's only Gujarat development program. That's all he knows. That's all he understands. Where is Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas in this country? It's all, Gujarat is the epicenter of everything. I'll just give you one example. In Telangana, we had launched what is called as the Hyderabad International Center for Arbitration and Mediation with the help of some legal luminaries. We wanted to, we wanted this to be, you know, we wanted to compete with Singapore, Dubai, London, and we wanted a lot of arbitration disputes to be settled here, the state would gain some revenue, it will make it also an attractive place to do business, etc. What should the government of India do in such a case when the state actually launches something on its own? At best, support us financially, give us some backing. At worst, at least don't create something which, is, which will be a hurdle. And that's exactly what they've done. They've gone ahead a couple of months later, announced in Gujarat a new center with complete center backing, a new center which is contrary, which runs exactly contrary to us. So the point is, this whole spirit that they talk about, unless it translates into action, this country will never truly be a federal, uh, fully federal republic. So at heart, this is a political, not an institutional issue.